Bonjour. I am Devon Da Vinci. You're watching Da Vinci Reacts. And that is probably the extent of all the French that I know in my French vocabulary. Well, I know I'm du fromage. But that's a whole other story in and of itself. Um, this is another Geography Now video. This is another European country. And actually, I'm starting to get kind of far in these Geography Now reactions. Um, I think the only European countries I haven't covered that they haven't actually gotten to or that they've already gotten to is uh, Spain, Portugal. There's not really a lot that I haven't checked out, but I will be getting into them uh, shortly. This is, I've already, I think I already said this, this is France. So let's see what France has to offer. Now everybody knows French culture is freaking all over the place. Like it's one of the most recognizable cultures in the world. One of the most battle-hardened countries in the world, too. If you remember the video that I reacted to with uh, countries with the most military wins, France is at number one right now. They're 10 wins above uh, the UK, which I think is like 1,110 or something like that. But yeah, France has been winning battles, which is ironic since they have a reputation for surrendering. And it's like, that was one war. <laughs> one war <laughs> but whatever you know your reputation can be based off of one event apparently I was about to uh, fuck it. I was about to say something that had to do with childhood and some kid like there was there was a kid whatever I'm, I'm just gonna get around it <laughs> I'm not gonna say it but anyway let's jump into this and see what this has to offer I'm curious to see what they're uh I'm really curious about the French food that that's what that's what I like let's jump into this Yep, one second. There we go. Comme certains d'entre vous le savent, en huitième des mois est français. Je suis donc en quelque sorte en obligation de honorer mon héritage. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. Ah, France. Pretty much everybody on the planet has heard of this place. I mean, immediately images of wine, cafes, embellished 18th century and cheese. architecture, Don't get cheese. and people who really hate globalization of the English language. But take a step back even further, and France becomes a really? place with jaguars, coconuts, volcanoes, penguins, grass skirts, war dances, pause, bamboo pause, foods, Pause the damn dogs. video. <laughs> jaguars. I ain't know France was I ain't know France was hanging like that. Like I, I can understand volcanoes everywhere pretty much has volcanoes. Coconuts and jaguars? Are we talking about the same country or is Barbie pranking me right now? I, like I'm legitimately curious. Also, I was about to talk about the them being upset over the globalization of the English language. First I was like, why would they be upset about that? But then I was wondering and I was thinking like, oh, okay, yeah. Because France and England were having a war to see who would rule the entire world and England pretty much came out on top so yeah I guess I would understand why you kind of be upset over all the English speaking countries they should be sprinkling French god damn it <laughs> hey there are parts of the United States that still speak uh, speak French I mean they, France owned a very large portion of the United States at one point and you could definitely see the culture especially if you go to, like Louisiana language but take a step back even further and france becomes a place with jaguars coconuts volcanoes penguins grass skirts war dances penguins. bamboo flutes witch doctors and a multifaceted history that has evolved into a people group into becoming one of the most notable nations on the planet i'm so confused i don't see <laughs> like he went to hawaii First, then africa france, then, then it just went to france like but what a transcontinental country that spans across 12 time zones more than any other country in the world France is kind of divided into two main parts. The European metropolitan France, where about 95% of the population lives, and the overseas French regions, departments, and territories, otherwise known as the Département et Territoires d'Outre-mer, or Dom Tom. Before we tell Dom you what Tom. they are, let's explain <laughs> the difference between them. Regions have exactly the same legal status as mainland France and the same civil, penal code, and administrative social tax laws. However, they can be slightly adapted to suit the region's particular needs. In collectivities, the autonomy rises and they are empowered to make their own laws except in certain areas like defense, currency, trade, and diplomacy. The overseas regions are Guadeloupe and Martinique in the Caribbean, French Guyana in South America, which by the way has the Kuro Space Center, disputably the best in the world because it adds an extra gravitational slingshot effect because it's so close to the equator of the Earth, and Reunion cool. and Mayotte off the coast of East Africa. The overseas collectivities are French Polynesia, 
you've probably heard of Tahiti, that's French Polynesia, as well as Wallace and Futuna in the Pacific, St. Pierre and Miquelon right off the coast of Canada, St. Barlemy and St. Martin, which is the only place in France that has a border with the Netherlands as the Dutch own the southern part of the island, located all in the Caribbean. The only islands that lie under the title of overseas territories are the French Southern and Antarctic Islands, or the TAAF. These islands are made up of the Cruellen Islands, the St. Paul and Amsterdam Islands, that abbreviation Islands, doesn't make sense. Own those, the Crozet Islands, and Adeliland, the claimed slice of Antarctica that is technically not recognized thanks to the Antarctic Treaty. And as of 2007, yeah. the scattered islands in the Indian Ocean, remember the Comoros episode, were added to make the fifth district of the territory, even though half of them are disputed with Comoros, Seychelles, and Mauritius. These islands are mostly uninhabited and only house temporary military or scientific personnel. Finally, France administers two special territories that don't quite fall into any of the previously mentioned categories. There's the uninhabited Clipperton Island off the coast of Mexico, which that has a crazy murder French. story behind it. And last but not murder least, story. there's New Caledonia, which has a special particular status out of the French administered overseas territories. New Caledonia is the only one that's vying for a kind of somewhat independence as the political power was passed to the native Kanak peoples. There is a weird dual French EU and New Caledonian citizenship thing going on. And in 2018, they will hold a referendum to either remain or leave France. And thanks to all these territories, they together give France the second largest... Okay, so if in 2018 they were debating about whether or not they would leave or stay in France, obviously it's passed, so somebody in comic set or comic somebody in the comment section let me know what uh, what what the result of that uh election was because chances are i'll probably forget by the time this is over also before i continue um i will have a link for geography now's channel at the end of this video uh, it'll pop up somewhere over here in the last 30 seconds click on it and check it out and if you want to show the original content creator some love the best way to do that is to open the original uh the original link in the description box down below I always recommend that you open it in a new window and play it on mute while this video is going on too so that way by the time this is done that one will have completed and you still have given both the videos a view um, but if you have a chance if you haven't seen this video watch it before you watch the reaction always or leave France. And thanks to all these territories, they together give France the second largest executive economic zone in the world after the US. Whew. Okay, now let's go back to metropolitan Europe, France. The country is located in Western Europe, bordered by eight other nation states. Don't forget little Andorra and Monaco. Along the coast by the English Channel and the Bay of Biscay in the north and west, as well as the Mediterranean Sea to the south. Mainland France is sometimes referred to as the hexagon, since if you tilt your head a little bit, it kind of looks like it has six sides. Quite frankly, I was always under the impression that it kind of looked like a teapot with feet. Mainland France is also divided <laughs> into 13 regions, including Corsica Island, 18 altogether if you include the overseas regions, with the capital, largest city, Bird as well as the main cultural and commercial center, and Normandy. Paris. I know we can talk on and on about Paris, what with the unbelievably designed metropolitan layout, the rich, vibrant atmosphere, the juxtaposition of classically adorned historical sites along neo-contemporary architecture, the food, the shops, and of course, au soleil, sous la pluie, à midi, au oh, amiri, il y a tout ce que vous voulez, aux champs Elysees. But that in itself would take too long, and we gotta get through hmm. three more segments. The busiest airports are the two Paris twins, Charles de Gaulle and Orly International, as well as Nice, Cote and the second and third largest cities, Lyon, Saint-Exupéry, nice. and Marseille, Provence International. At around 643,000 square kilometers, France is the largest country in the EU. The interesting thing about France is that it's kind of divided into areas that historically had their own distinct cultural identity. Some of the most notable ones being Occitania, Savoy, Brittany, Normandy, Alsace, a section of the Basque Country, Nice, and the island of Corsica, which speaks its own dialect most French people can't even understand. Say, These regions founded by the Karate Kid? What? piece of the French pie. Speaking of pie, we all know about French food which is great because we're going to discuss more about it in there we go this is what i want to hear about if you look at france's physical makeup you start to kind of understand why food plays such a huge role in their culture everything just kind of works out perfectly for them for metropolitan france big rich nourishing rivers and their tributaries like the garonne dordogne loire saint meuse and rhone entangle the entire country north to south east to west allowing an abundance of irrigated crop fields to exist in nearly every corner of the country now add on top of that the fact that the country does not have any major fault lines they enjoy a nice oceanic European climate, and they don't suffer regularly from any major natural catastrophe.
catastrophes. Most of the country is made up of arable flat plains or small rolling green hills that are just begging for cultivation. And voila, you have an agricultural gold mine. In fact, out of every country in the EU, France reportedly has the highest quality of soil performance and resilience, and only a few spots like in the Caucasus region and parts of Eastern Europe and Southern Russia rank higher. So there you go, food Ooh. haven. In the south, you reach the mountainous regions of France, including the Pyrenees along the border with Spain, the Massif Central Plateaus, one of the most geologically studied places in Europe due to the strange formation. He still hasn't talked about the dishes yet. All along the borders with Italy and Switzerland. By the way, Switzerland was all like, mm, yeah, I'm not gonna share Lake Le Mans, it's mine. And that's how Geneva was born. The highest point in France, <laughs> let alone all of the EU, is Mont Blanc, found in the French Alps along the border with Italy, only second in it's height Mount to the Caucasus White, right? Mountains in all of Europe. If you consider the Caucasus region a part of Europe, some people don't, but that's just, that's another story. France is a cornucopia of produce, dairy, and meat. Every region has their own specialty, but two things are everywhere, cheese and wine. The French are the largest consumers of cheese with over 1,200 different varieties found all over the country. The French also have a larger range Eat of unconventionally out, consumed meat products. Most countries stick with beef, chicken, pork, maybe lamb or goat and fish. However, the French aren't satisfied with just that. Other animals like pheasant, duck, goose, quail, rabbit, venison, veal, horse, frogs, and snails are consumed regularly. Speaking of which, the national animal is the Gallic rooster, which is why you might typically see a lot of roosters on French affiliated symbols. In fact, France is one of the most entomophagous, that's insect eating, countries in Europe as about 700 million snails are estimated to be consumed every year by the French, especially in Burgundy, yeah, the largest you, you snail can, producer. You can hang on to that one. Unfortunately, due to the fact that the French are the highest consumers of raw or mildly cooked red meats, a huge portion of the population is either exposed or chronically infected by the Taxoplasma gondii parasite that disputably over half the population is suspected to have. This little guy eventually finds its way into your brain, changes people's behaviors into being either more caring or aggressive and suspicious. Look it up, I'm not even joking. The Alps are famous oh. for their charcuterie and fondue, Brittany for its crepes, Cantal for its chestnuts, Dijon for its mustard, La Veyron for Aligo, Rheim for its champagne, and then we get to Bordeaux. Now, first of all, every region of France likes to claim that they have the best wine. However, it's widely known that Bordeaux is disputably the home of the largest wine wine vineyards in the world pumping out over half a billion liters of wine a year. The French take their produce maintenance very seriously and became the first country in the world to ban supermarkets from throwing away or destroying unsold food since February of 2016. All businesses must donate wastage to either charities or food banks to combat crop wastage on I'm going to say this real quick because I just wanted to get this out of the way before I forget. Now, I know about wine and everything else, but I mean, as somebody that doesn't really drink alcohol, I don't have a problem with wine at all, but I don't drink alcohol, so I don't know a lot of the nuances behind it. Like, for example, what is the point of particular years? Like, you hear people say, like, oh, this was a this is a good year wine or whatever. Like, what makes a, a wine a good year? Is it, like, what actually happened that year? Or is there, like, a certain amount of time it should be aged to perfection? Is there such thing as too old, too young <laughs> all right what, what's the purpose of the whole good year of wine i always assumed that it had to do with just like how like if 2000 if well not 2000 let's go older than that i want i want i want no cheap ass wine let's say 1991 was a bad year for me not necessarily i was two years old <laughs> i accomplished all of my stuff that time i went potty i learned to walk all that stuff but uh, <laughs> imagine if uh when you're uh, in 1991, that was uh, considered a bad year. Would that mean that any wines from 1991 would be something that I wouldn't drink? Like, what? what's the purpose of that? country in the world to ban supermarkets from throwing away or destroying unsold food since February of 2016. That's cool. All businesses must donate wastage to either charities or food banks yeah, to combat good. crop wastage on farms. France has even Most opened up ugly fruit or vegetable shops or in which you can buy disfigured like... produce for 30% off. Other than foodstuffs though, main exports are aircraft, chemicals, machinery, iron, and steel, electronics, motor vehicles, and pharmaceuticals. Of course, the overseas territories and regions also have climates and topographies that are completely different. The care Shout out to Toucan TV YouTube channel. I mean, their YouTube channel's name is way longer than that, but I've learned as much as I can about Toucans from that channel. Go check them out. 
course, the overseas territories and regions also have climates and topographies that are completely different. The Caribbean islands and Guyana enjoy a warm Caribbean tropical climate. Guyana being part of the Amazon, having one of the highest forest cover densities in the world at over 95%, with over 1,100 species of birds and reptiles and mammals found in it. Reunion and Mayotte off the coast of Africa have deep jungle ravines and a common volcanic activity going on. The scattered islands are mostly uninhabited, sandbanks and lagoons with nothing more than just a few trees and shrubs. The southern Antarctic islands are rocky and desolate with few grasses and vegetation. Kerwellen has these cabbage looking things going on. And these islands typically freeze over in the winter with penguins stampeding off the coasts. New Caledonia and French Polynesia are tropical Pacific islands that enjoy an abundance of rich, unspoiled, thick jungle brush and colorful flowers. Like and of course, Adelie Land is like all ice and Antarctica. All right, we've discussed borders, boundaries, mountains, food, volcanoes. Now let's talk about who's running the entire show. <laughs> France is a country of people that are very, very intent on making sure that you know they are French. First of all, the country has about 67 million people and is the second largest in Europe after Germany, making 13% of the EU alone. About 85% of the population is white, 10% are North African, mostly from the Maghreb regions, a little over 3% are black, and a little less than 2% are Asian. It is interesting when you think about it that, like, France is such an old country, but they don't have a lot of people. Like, 60 million people isn't necessarily a lot. I mean, even though they said it's the second largest in the EU, for a country that that spans like thousands of years, you, I would have expected them to have built more. Like, especially a romantic country like France, like I would have thought they had been getting down and making all types of babies, but apparently not. I guess. I mean, obviously it's a it's not well. It's the biggest country in the EU. Get to making babies, France. We need more French people in this world. Well, we need more, well, I'm not about to sit here and talk about overpopulation or stuff, but whatever. 60 million seems rather low, though. The currency is the euro, they use the type CEF outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road, which makes things interesting when their neighbors from the UK come across the right side of the now road Now let's talk about here, the baby. white people. Most white French people have some or partial Celtic or Gaulish origins, as historically the Gauls inhabited most of the centralized regions of modern-day France. That means, genetically, the French and British have a lot more in common than they think. Of course, an admixture of Latin and Germanic roots also applies, as all three people groups had their stake of claim in France as well. The name France even came from the Germanic Frank tribe. French is, of course, the official language. However, regional dialects do exist, but for the most part, they do pretty well at making sure everyone speaks it. Granted, the linguistic zones that we mentioned before each have their own flag, still cling on to their mother tongue, and sometimes you can even find street signs written in these languages. For example, Breton, a Celtic-based language related to Welsh and Irish found in Brittany, Basque in the Basque country, Occitan in Occitania. Corsicans have like this strange half French, half Italian hybrid thing going on. Keep in mind though, most of the languages spoken in the linguistic zones are kind of dying out and only the older generation really retains daily conversation in those languages. Outside of metropolitan France, the overseas departments and territories each speak French, but in addition typically have their own creoles or dialects. For example, in the Caribbean, Martinique and Guadeloupe might say Sac à marcher, tu bon man, tu mal man. In Reunion or Mayotte, they might say Coiffe, comment il est, à où. France is the most visited country in the world, as more people than the entire population of France visit France annually at about 80 million. Culture-wise, there is too much to discuss. I mean, we are talking millennia of tribes, wars, empires, heroes, villains, artists, poets, architects, kings, queens, guillotines, revolutions, inventions, music, dance, clothing, fashion, cinema, cuisine, discoveries, victories, losses, folklore, science, literature, medicine, and baguettes. To cover it all, we would need a whole separate YouTube channel. But for what it's worth, since the Middle Ages, France has been able to show time after time again that it has been a global force to be reckoned with. I mean, the French at one point in time had the second largest empire in the world, spanning across virtually every region on every continent. One thing you have to understand is that in a fast-growing Anglophone driven global economy, France is very, very firmly intent on preserving the French language and culture. The governmentally sanctioned Académie Française has aimed at doing this since 1634. They do things like, somewhat unsuccessfully, banning foreign words such as blog, hashtag, parking, email, and weekend. <laughs> In addition, the French media's top regulators, Why? the CSA and CNC, Why? have strictly enforced policies that require all music on private radio to be at least of 40% French origin and 70% in the French an language between the hours of, side of the internet by doing PM, that. And half the music quota must be less than six months old. Everything must be 
French. France is, of course, home to a plethora of notable figures in every field of academia and athleticism. I mean, they have almost 70 Nobel Peace Prize winners, including famous chemist Pierre and Marie Curie. Few people know that they had a daughter who also became a notable scientist. Other scientists, writers, and philosophers like Descartes, Pascal, Baudelaire, Flaubert, Pasteur, Châtelet, Bouton, who, by the way, invented the metric system. Musicians like mm. Ramelot, Lully, Debussy, Jacques Brel, Edith Piaf. Of course, we can't forget the fashion icons, Louis Vuitton, Never Pro Chanel, Debussy. and Christine Duart. I mean, it's no secret, France is often touted as the fashion capital of the world. Artists like Monet, Cezanne, Renoir, Degas, Manet, and Gauguin. And of course, what's an episode about France without mentioning anything about Kings Louis XIV and XVI, Joan of Arc, and Napoleon? In a simple way of putting it, French culture is very vibrant and proud. The French love where they've come from and how they go about doing things. The Catholic Church once played a major role, and to this day, even as a secular state with dwindling church attendees, many French people still, in the very least, identify nominally as Catholic, mostly for a cultural thing. It's just their history and they don't want to toss it away. They also love taking breaks and get... I actually heard an um, uh, interesting story. I think Matt Dillahunty talked about this. He said, like, somebody had asked, like, why do you think that America is much more religion faith <laughs> if, that, if that's a word, <laughs> compared to Europe, when Europe has state religions and America doesn't have a state religion. Like, why is it that America hangs on to religion a lot harder, even though they don't have, like, a sponsored religion? And he said that he thinks the reason why that happens is because in Europe, there is no, like, competition. It's, like, they have a, a state faith, and everybody pretty much goes by that. So there's not really competition among religions, whereas in America... You have all these other religions that are like vying to try to get your attention. So they're a lot more enthusiastic with trying to get followers. And that leads to people like getting more involved in religion and stuff. So maybe that has something to do with it. Which is interesting because like, yeah, America doesn't have a sponsored religion. But it seems like. Well, I don't know if it seems, and I think it's pretty much confirmed that America has the highest percentage of people that believe in angels and things like that other, among any other country. And, yeah, we're just like a, we're just a really religious stemmed country, and I don't really understand why. But I guess that's a decent explanation for now. Catholic, mostly for a cultural thing. It's just their history and they don't want to toss it away. They also love taking breaks and getting their sleep. On average, the French get about 8.83 hours of sleep every day, more than any other country in the developed world. And they also have some of the shortest work weeks with only about six to seven hours on average a Ooh, day. That's and that's nice. enough for them. It's not uncommon to see people taking time off in the middle of the day, early evening, just to relax and take a nap. They even have a word for it, l'heure de l'apéro, which literally translates to the hour of the aperitif. People can also claim state pension at age 62, making it one of the lowest retirement ages in the world and of course the sport french people rank highest in the world going on strike i mean the last thing you want to do is interrupt a frenchman's nap during a six-hour shift with corporate <laughs> policy changes <laughs> yep the world could be a cruel cruel place let's see how france survives in the jungle when it comes to france they don't discriminate they hate everyone equally. No, seriously. <laughs> France has their eyes on a few people, and when they see what they like, they cling on and make you a treasure. First of all, Francophone nations and Latin-based former Roman legacy nations generally get the high seats, especially their neighbors like Switzerland, Luxembourg, Italy, and Spain. Quebec, Canada is to France kind of like what the USA is to the UK. They adore each other, they love each other's accents, but they love making fun of each other even more, even though they are really close. Algeria, cool. Morocco, and Tunisia are the closest African nations as they make up the largest African immigrant demographics, followed by sub-Saharan African countries like Cameroon and Côte d'Ivoire, or Ivory Coast. For France, Japan is seen as like the epitome of exoticism. Similar to themselves, the Japanese have a rich culture of noble tradition, things like castles, attire, and food. Likewise, Japan sort of shares yeah. the same mutual fascination and see France as like its European alternate universe twin. There's no two countries that like to poke fun of and borderline harass each other with the French as the UK and the USA. As historical rivals with the UK, I mean, they did have a hundred year war with them and the USA busting their chops about World War II all the time. All sides yeah. like to satirize each other in cartoons and media all the time. <laughs> Nonetheless, they are actually really close. The UK and France have been crossing borders and intermarrying for centuries. Commerce and student exchanges are high and the US was helped by the French during the Revolutionary War and they even gave the Statue of Liberty as a present. True. That is 100% true. We would not be a country, we would likely not be a country without France's help 
and in return we helped them out in World War II but at the end of the day it was all a group effort it's always interesting when you see these things like countries that have history together even like not just being friends but even ones that are in enemies like America and the UK like they're like our closest ally now France and the UK I'm not sure how like if their relationship is as close as the United States and the UK but the considering the fact that they probably spent a huge majority of their history like fighting each other <laughs> they're pretty close which is interesting to say the least like you we're friends now and we're good friends sometimes that's all you need is a good fight I don't know about you guys but I've noticed myself that some of my best friends are people that either I had a big misunderstanding with early on or were people that I didn't get along with early on maybe because you see the worst of somebody and over time like once you accept that you accept like that person as a whole whereas other people it's like you don't know exactly what their worst is because they don't show you they only show you what you want to see or they only show you their like first impression self like the one they want you to the one they want to leave an impression on you with whereas like an enemy you know exactly what they're worth and if you can get past that then you got a great friend so fellow Americans, thank France for Lady Liberty, okay? It was a kind gesture. France's best friends, though, would probably be Germany and Belgium. It's kind of hmm. funny because historically, the only country that was consistently an opponent of France was Germany. Ever since the split of Charlemagne's empire in three, most of Europe's history was driven by the overarching rivalry between variations of France and all variations of Germany, including the Holy Roman Empire, the Teutonic Order, Prussia, and of course, the Third Reich. But the plot twist was the creation of the EU. Following Robert Schumann's speech that states explicitly that for Europe to even hope to work, the millennia-old rivalry between France and Germany has to be resolved for good. Ever since 1950, France and Germany have taken a lot of political inspiration off of each other. Heads of states have visited each other on numerous occasions, and both countries have been the biggest advocates for the survival of the Union. And Belgium is like their little brother that moved out and got a Dutch-speaking roommate and visits <laughs> France every so often to raid their fridge and do their laundry. In conclusion, <laughs> les Français sont connus pour être intrépides, turbulents, mais qui gardent quand même un certain charme. Ils ont parfois l'air des Symbol. Mais bon, essaye de vivre dans un pays envahi 24 heures sur 24, 7 jours sur 7. Pas de hordes de touristes qui piétinent vos jardins, massacrent votre gastronomie et vous demandez de vous plaire au moindre de leurs désirs sans même vous dire un petit merci. Oh, France, faut la comprendre. Stay tuned. France's rich former little colony, Gabon, is coming up next. Oh, uh, yeah. Like I said, France is one of those countries that like maybe because i'm american i don't really see a lot of the cultural aspects of the uk because we pretty much are the same thing we have some different words maybe and like there's not a lot of cultural differences between america and the uk so the fact that i've been living in it for like all my life i don't really notice the cultural things because it's just like life <laughs> but when i look at france like you see all the the things that make it so different but at the same time it's like there's just a tiny sliver of familiarity right there and it, it it's just interesting like it makes you want to study it more that that goes with all the countries that have like huge history so you go to italy you go to uh japan you go to china like all those places just have the, like these gigantic histories that almost seem like they come out of a storybook um yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to check out more of it. But as of right now, I want to thank you guys for coming through. Um, again, be sure to check out Geography Now's channel. I have a link for it at the end of this video. And be sure to check out the original video to show them some support. That's the best way you can help them out. Like, I can't express enough. Go watch the videos. And if you like this video, the best way that you can help me out is hitting that thumbs up button. That's it. Just click the button. I know you have a liked video playlist. Chances are you don't watch it. I know you. You don't watch the playlist. So click it. And if you don't like me being in it, just take me out. Or if you don't want to see more of my videos pop up on your recommended, click the X button for not interested. But make sure you hit that like button. Whatever you do, show me some support. Please. <laughs> now, with that being said, I'm Devon Da Vinci. Hopefully, you've just been a little more enlightened. I look forward to seeing you guys in a future video. And until then, I'm going to give you the deuces. And I'm signing out. Deuces.